let us go to the next sum in a reversible reaction in a reversible reaction yeah so in a reversible reaction uh, is go is going to be the uh, activation energy reversible reaction and an activation energy the uh, in a re the in a reversible reaction the energy of activation activation for activation for the forward reaction okay, for the forward reaction is is 50 kilocalories what will be the energy of the reverse reaction what will be the energy for the reversible reaction <laughs> so if you this you take it as energy for the forward reaction what is the energy for the backward reaction okay so the choices given are a and the is less than 50 calories 50 kilocalories then it is equal to 50 calories b 50 calories 50 kilocalories c when the either greater than or less than 50 kilocalories and choice d is greater than 50 kilocalories okay so this sum can be better understood by doing the plot of uh, the activation energy energy this is energy with the reaction coordinate So when see this thing, if you take this uh, this thing, uh, of course, if you take this uh, thing, if it goes like this and then it comes like this. So this is the activation energy for the forward reaction. Okay, this is the energy for the activation energy of the reactants for the forward reaction. Okay, this is for the reactants. And this is for the products. <laughs> okay. So if this is a, if such a thing is there, and if this is 50 kilocalories, if this activation energy, this is the activation energy, once they all the molecules reach to this level, the reaction happens on its own and then it becomes the products are the thing, the products energy. In case if you have a situation like this, where this energy is less and this energy is more. Okay, this is the typical graph you would have seen in Arrhenius equation, when which you would have seen in your test. So here reaction, uh, the activation energy for the reactants is less and activation energy for energy for the reactants is less and the product's energy is more. So what happens, you know what is an exothermic reaction and what is an endothermic reaction? What is an exothermic reaction? Exothermic reaction is the one where energy is released. So the reactants, they react and not only they give the products, they also give the energy. So, the energy which is liberated plus the product's energy, both are present in the, the here. So, definitely the, 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 the energy which is there after the reaction is over, the energy which is there after the reaction is over is definitely more than the energy which is there before the reaction. Okay? You understood? For the exothermic reaction, the initial energy or uh, whatever it is or the activation energy will be less 
and once the product reaction is over, the product's energy plus energy release will be more. Okay, so that is the situation in case if this is a forward reaction. So in, the, in this forward reaction, if this is a reversible reaction, the products cannot get converted to reactants. Products cannot get converted, that is the reversible action reaction cannot happen unless the products get some energy from outside. So if there is a forward reaction is endothermic, I mean exothermic, the reverse reaction will be endothermic. Forward reaction is exothermic, reverse reaction will be endothermic. Or if the, it is vice versa, if this forward reaction is endothermic, that rate with that activation energy for the reactants will be more and activation energy for the products will be less in case if the forward reaction is, you know, because you also require some more energy. Reactants have their own energy plus their energy which is again required. So all this put together will create, will have more this thing. So this is the difference of energy. The difference of the energy is change in energy. If this change in energy, if this change in energy is positive, that is if this delta H is, the value for delta H is like this, then this is a exothermic reaction. In case if this delta H value is another case, let us take the another case where the reaction coordinate, we are fixing it to this thing at the same energy with the reaction coordinate. So here this energy is like this. So this is from going from here, it goes up and then it is like this. This is products, this is reactant. So what is this, this activation energy? Okay, so this energy level and whereas this energy level. So and the difference is delta H. So here the re delta H is, delta H has a small value, initial minus final, initial this thing, this thing, so this is dropping, if in case I am going to put it as 10, 20, 30, so this is from 30, it is coming down to 10, okay, from 30 it is coming down to 10, so to that extent, the difference of the energy is released. So this is delta H is minus, whereas here the same. So from 20, it has gone to 40. So here there is an addition which is required. So here delta H becomes positive, here delta H becomes negative. So for endothermic reaction, there will be the reaction for the reversible reaction, the energy for the reversible reaction, energy for the reversible reaction will be greater than the thing. And for the, uh, the endothermic, and in case if it is exothermic, re sorry, if it is exothermic reaction, energy of the products will be more than energy of the reactants. In case if it is exo, I mean endothermic reaction, energy of the products will be less than this thing. So either it will be greater or less because we have not mentioned what type of reaction it is. We don't know. Whether it is an exothermic or an endothermic reaction and so either it may be greater or it is less than 50 calories that should be the right answer. So choice C is correct. Hope you are able to understand. I have put both for exothermic and endothermic how the reaction, uh, how the re energy is for the forward and the other. 
how the energies will change if it is an exothermic reaction and how the energy will change if it is an endothermic reaction. Hope you are able to understand. Okay. So, let us go to the next sum. The rate constant for a zero order reaction. Zero order reaction A gives B is zero point six into ten power minus three more. mole per second if the concentration of a a is 5m what is the concentration of b after 20 minutes, after 20 minutes, okay. So, here itself, the unit for rate constant is mole per second, okay. So, since it is uh, moles per second, uh, naturally it becomes a zero order reaction. So, for this the concentration can be found out using the formula x is equal to k into t. So, it is dependent only on the rate constant and the time. Okay, it is only dependent on the rate constant and the time and it does not depend on the initial or kind of concentration or so. So, uh, substituting the value of 0 0.6 into 10 power minus 3 into 20, it should be converted to seconds, minutes to be converted to seconds. <laughs> Once you convert this, so whatever we are able to get, okay, so this becomes 10 power minus 1, okay. So, 6 into 12, 6 twelves are 72, so 7.2. Seven point two m should be the value. Okay. <laughs> Hope you are able to understand. So this, since the unit is in the rate constant, unit is in mole. There in itself, there itself, we can derive that this is a zero order reaction. For a zero order reaction, the it depends on the rate constant depends only on the the concentration and the time. So, this is the concentration is a multiple of k into t. So, we have getting this as k. This is 0.6 into 10 power minus 3, correct. Okay. So, whatever values we have, that is actually this is uh, one minute. Uh, actually, even this answer should be like 7.2 into 7.2 into 10 power minus 1 or 0 0.7. Okay. This is 7.2 into 10 power minus 1. So, 0 0.72 is the right answer. 